All right. Tony interviewed MJF. <laughs> this MJF, like, this is a thing with old Lenny and his bet. It's like, MJF is involved in 40 storylines, and he's got 80 challengers for his title. And, no and your your conclusion is he's about to lose the belt. And so all of this work to build up challengers is for naught. Well. If if Roman Reigns, think about think about Lenny. If Roman Reigns all of a sudden had five challengers for the title, all vying for his belt, and then a week later he lost the belt, can you imagine Lenny's response to that booking in WWE? But that is what he is expecting here from AEW. We have multiple challengers for MJF. Yet he's about to lose the belt and face none of them for that title. Lenny? It's all a 4D chess, bro. Go to the bank, brother. All sleight of hand for Jay White to have all those opponents now. So he talks about Jay White. He talks about Daniel Garcia. And then Garcia shows up and MJF says, You know, I'm not giving you this belt for your stellar win-loss record. I'm giving it because I see potential in you. But I want to know, are you going to be the sports entertainer tonight or the pro wrestler? Garcia says, I'll be the pro wrestler. So Adam Cole's on the big screen. He's telling he's telling uh, MJF, you know, you really should team with Samoa Joe in the, that Ring of Honor tag title match. And MJF in storyline doesn't want to team with Joe because the babyface world champion doesn't want to face Samoa Joe. Roderick Strong shows up, says he'll give MJF some tips. MJF walks out on him. Adam hangs up on him. This was a lot of stuff in this segment. A little busy. A little busy. Then we had MJF and Daniel Garcia for the world title. And it was a 10-minute match, but it was good for a 10-minute match. But this wasn't like a pay-per-view caliber match or anything like that. And MJF tapped him out with the salt of the earth. And then afterwards, he wanted a handshake. Garcia went to shake his hand, but this cool hand and daddy magic jumped in to prevent it. So MJF tries to get him to dump these guys, and he comes back to do the handshake again, but they stop him again, and they pull him backstage. Too much. Too much. The pro wrestler will be returning at some point. Shibata? No. Oh. Darby and Sting beat the Outrunners. This was like uh, maybe a minute. Fans loved them some Sting here. But the Outrunners actually, um, I shouldn't say any more. It was a ring of honor, so I guess people don't get mad about those spoilers. They won a match on... Uh, on Ring of Honor television. They are easily uh, cheerable and booable gimmicks. They definitely are. Yeah. Truth Magnum, actually, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, Truth Magnum, I used to hang out with and wrestle with all the time. His name was Shiloh. He was a Buddy Wayne student. And I think originally he was Shiloh Mount. Then he went to Ohio Valley. He was Shiloh Jones. And uh, and I had absolutely, positively no idea he was one of the outrunners until like a month ago or something like that. I was like, that's Shiloh! And in fact, it was. Just for Taz I, saying it, I would love for him to go back to the name Shiloh Jones. Please. Yes. <laughs> then Tony is with Tony and Sheeta. They had a black and white gimmick, signed contracts, and... Uh, that was that. Can we get another Tony there so it could be Tony, Tony, Tony? Uh, Khan. Is that too old? He should have been reference? there. He should have. Swerve and Penta. The match was awesome. And you know, the follow-up was awesome as well. But I could not help but laugh that Swerve broke into this man's house <laughs> and breaking and entering, cutting a promo on a sleeping child in a crib. And AEW's reaction in storyline to this is, we got to keep Hangman out of the building yeah. when this guy we has gotta, a wrestling match. Got to keep booking Swerve and keep Hangman away. And then uh, my other favorite part is, you know, this uh, you know this Swerve committed a heinous crime, breaking yeah. and entering, okay? And so AEW tells Hangman, brother, you can't go to the ring during his wrestling match. And Hangman's like, all right, I'll have another uh, biscuit back here while I wait. <laughs> and so he waited, and then... Swerve won a great match, I might add. And then Hangman runs down. Hangman is going to kill this man for breaking and entering and threatening his child. And so they send out security to protect Swerve. <laughs> like, golly. Whatever happened to that security guard last week when they got into it and he was just laying there dead in the middle of the ground? Yeah, he's they probably never... still dead. 
<laughs> and then Hangman gave Swerve the uh, dead eye off the uh, ramp through a table. So that's uh, that's that. You know what this reminds me of in not exactly the same sort of way, and they have these guys there. They have Matt Hardy and Adam Copeland were there when Lita and Edge had their deal, and they fired Matt Hardy. It feels kind of, you know, in some ways the same way of how is this justice working here from this company? Except that it's was not. real. It's not. That's the problem. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and like, uh, I don't think... Th- someone brought up to me, do you think it was a spoof on Monday when... Uh, Sami Zayn stole the briefcase on Sunday, and then the second he got to the building on Monday, he was told you got to give it back. And meanwhile, in AEW, Jay White's had this belt for four weeks now, yeah. and nobody has said, "Can you give the belt back to the champion, brother?" They're like, "Ah, you know, finders keepers." There's no authority figure there. It is sheer chaos. No matter where you look, we had a Jay White promo where he mocked MJF for bringing up Google Trends. <laughs> Don Cal's video package, this was good. Then we had the Jericho, Kenny, and the Bucks segment, where, a long story short, the Bucks are mad that, hey, we got the Elite back together, and and here you are. You know, you're not teaming with us. You're teaming with this Jericho who we don't trust. And Jericho's like, yeah, you know what? We could beat you two. And now Matt's like, oh, yeah, you could beat us? And poor Kenny, he's just standing there all quiet, like, why am I in the middle of all of this? And then finally, as as, uh, the other three are arguing back and forth, Kenny says, listen, I don't want to wrestle you guys, but hold on a second. And we're really arguing about whether I could beat you? Because look at the track record. I've done it before. And so they agree to the stipulation match coming up at the pay-per-view, which should be a great match. They had a chance to zing Jericho right there, too, when they were talking about him waltzing his way in when they started the company. He's like, as I remember it, you know, it was the four of us here, and, and one of them should have said, well, you don't look like Cody. And they didn't, though. So one of the things in AEW is they don't like to beat people. So we had Samoa Joe and Keith Lee for the Ring of Honor television title. And uh, I hate to break it to Lenny, Mm. but they're going to be doing Samoa Joe and MJF. And they didn't want to beat Samoa Joe. And so what happens is he beats Keith Lee clean in the middle and then vacates the Ring of Honor title. So he didn't. Dropped the title to Keith Lee to get it off of him. He just vacated it because they don't want him to lose on his way, Lenny, to challenging MJF for the world championship. I hope they have a good story for this. I really do because Keith Lee and Shane Taylor for that TV title, I think he could have done that. Brian, stop it. Stop it. I didn't say anything. But I would have waited a week. Because look at how, and you'll get to it, how the show ended. MJF going out there causing a distraction on Joe, even if it was miscommunicate, whatever it is, and then Lee getting the victory. I would have liked to have seen that, so I don't know where they're going with this story, but it probably could have helped Keith Lee in that ROH TV title. Well, the funny thing about it is that Samoa Joe's explanation is, I want the world title, not a Ring of Honor title. So he vacates the Ring of Honor title to face a man who has the world title and a Ring of Honor title. Well, he just doesn't want to face Eddie. I guess. Orange and Hook do a promo. Orange did a good promo on Moxley. And then later, Moxley did a good promo on on uh, Orange. And, uh, man, this Moxley promo, when he was done, I thought, my God, they're going to have a street fight inside LAX. How are they going to pull that off? And then they later announce, well... It's going to be a tag match next week. Wheeler and and, uh, and Moxley versus Orange and Hook. Hey, I got a question for you. Just real quick here. I wonder if Moxley wins that title. Can you see him going over? And no matter who wins that match coming up on January 4th, that is the new title? Is it an AEW no. New Japan International the way title? The way they did the interviews here, I'm pretty sure that Orange Cassidy is beating Moxley at the pay-per-view. That's my guess. Intercontinental title. It's going... Uh, Gun squash the Bollywood boys in 30 yeah. seconds and then 39. cut a promo on uh, MJF. Then we had Red Velvet and Julia Hart. <laughs> and uh, this, match was, this match was not very good. It was Red's first match back in about a year. Her knee brace was falling off. The announcers were talking about how she might like be blown up, like her wind isn't back yet. And then, you know... Always good for the commentators to point out. I mentioned this, and then on the board, someone was like, Yeah, well, I got a 6.42 on cage match. Oh, God. That's nice. Dave, it wasn't Dave a very Cross good match. Dave checked it. He did. So, uh, Julia won. And then, 
Let's think of what we could do here. Julia wins, and then she goes after Red. Sky Blue comes to the ring. They go face-to-face. Statlander comes out. Willow comes out. There's a stare down. Sky and Julia, uh, Chris gets between them. Julia walks off. They're like, very interesting stuff going on here. And I'm like, okay, I guess. And then, as God is my witness, they go, let's go backstage to the repugnant RJ City. Whatever the word they used. And they go backstage, and RJ City goes, Mariah May is signed with AEW. I went, what? And she walks in. She says, I am, I'm a mark for Tony Storm. He goes, you'll meet her next week. And she kisses him. I was like, that's the debut of Mariah May. Well, what? Anyway, she's debuted in a backstage segment at the bottom of the 9 o'clock hour with RJ City. So then we had Mark Briscoe and Jay White. They had a great match. Fans loved Mark Briscoe. Jay White is a great heel. I love the spot where uh, he's going for a move, but then he, oh, my knee, and he falls down, and he did a great job. And the ref goes to him, and then the heels beat up the dude outside. Mm-hmm. They, they did it great. And uh, Mark makes the big, the big comeback, hits an exploder off a Blade Runner attempt, tries the Jay Driller, Jay Counters, uh, Sleeper Suplex, second one, cross arm Brain Buster, Blade Runner, pins him clean in the middle. Excellent main event. MGF hits the ring, beats up the ass boys in juice with the diamond ring. Uh, Jay White bails. MGF cuts a promo about all the people he's fighting for. And then the lights go out. They come back on. Four masked dudes are beating up the acclaimed. The devil face appears on the screen. MJF rushes backstage, runs into Joe, who says, Looks like you're running out of friends. That was the show. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MJF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy Ass has been calling himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do, in their own words is eat their opponent's asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? Sky Blue has a very... um, Thick. Thank you. Uh, Backside, of course, Tony is the same way. So they had to one-up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira is running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass. This is the kinkiest wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.